This is the Stock Trend Reality Podcast, episode 168. I didn't know the difference between traders and bankers because, well, why would I? I never, never was exposed to it and never had any interest. And I thought you needed PhDs and huge skills in maths and all those things, you know. And This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host, one of his newest role models, Cameron Hayes, Clay Trader. So Ches, my question to you, have you heard of Cameron Haynes? Uh, yeah, I don't remember why though. Um, is this that hunter guy? Yeah, no? he, well, he, he's, uh, he's a bow hunter, but then he also does ultra marathons where like you okay. run hundreds of miles and like to train for an ultra marathon you run marathons so like he runs multiple marathons a week to train for these things and oh yeah easy easy i do that too it's yeah, no yeah, problem. yeah it's no problem is that before no or after your, your your three hour leg weight session too where you're squatting 400 pounds probably after uh, i would assume yeah yeah it's after and then i drive down uh, a 17 inch pizza you know four times a day to keep my health correct yeah, and then i drown it out with a pitcher of beer yeah, well, yeah, there's fries in there somewhere too, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, healthy. Health. We promote healthy living here. But yeah, Cameron Haynes, uh, he's an impressive guy. And uh, he's, uh, you know, if you have not looked at his YouTube channel or anything like that, I would um, encourage you to. He, it's pretty uh, pretty impressive what he can do, not only from a, a physical perspective, but he's been on uh, several podcasts and he has a podcast of his own. Um, and I like his mentality that he has. He's got like a, I don't want any excuses. Like I, I run marathons to train for these ultra marathons, and the guy's just the beast. So um, I like I like those people with beast mode mentalities. What do I mean by beast mode mentality? Well, there you go. Check out Cameron uh, Haynes, and he uh, he kind of epitomizes that. So moving on to our discussion today, we uh, I was not aware of this, but we're heading over the uh, the ocean, and we're going to Germany to talk with somebody who happens to be English, uh, and. Um, it was a great interview, Ches. We were talking about this, but uh, Dave, who goes by uh, Dave, what does he go by? We put Dave Slow, the, I believe. Dave Slow in the in the alley or in the chat room. So for those of you that are members of the chat room, Dave Slow is his uh, alias in the chat room. Uh, but Ches and I were talking, and you know, he he volunteered, which was great. But he was making the comment to us like, "Well, you know, I, I really don't have much to say." And Ches, our theory held up strong once again. The people that don't think they have anything to talk about have all sorts of interesting perspectives, don't they? Yep, that's how it always goes. So yeah, it was a great story, and uh, listeners will be happy to hear that you passed his uh, BS detector. So yeah, that's pretty good. That's true, and also to to Dave's credit, he disagrees with. Uh, I think just I don't know if he ever disagreed with Ches, but yeah, we had a couple disagreements, um, a few fist. No, there weren't any fist fights, but yeah, he was somebody that uh, he would just speak his mind, and that's great. That that keeps things real. That keeps things uh, genuine. And um, yeah, so he, he disagreed a few times and clarified a, a couple other things. Don't go into this thing. There's going to be like dramatic, like screaming fights. It's nothing like that. My point is, though, that he kept it real, uh, but he also wasn't just, uh, you know, kind of going with the flow and agreeing to everything that Ches and I said. So um, a lot of good stuff here, a lot of interesting talking points and a lot of things that he's been through uh, where whether if you're a newer trader or you've traded for a while, I'm sure you'll be able to relate and learn from. So let's get to it and hear about Dave and his story. Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Now, I wanted I, I was going to ask you before we got all this officially recording, but I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll keep this as unscripted and real as possible, but uh, I, I, I'm not, Ches, are you picking up an accent, perhaps? <laughs> well, I already uh, got the spoiler alert that he's on the other side of the pond, so yes, I'm definitely detecting an accent. So we are, are am I talking to another, uh, uh, I mean, I guess I'm trying to think. What were we? Were we used to be, co you know, before the Revolutionary War? Are you oh, a Brit? Don't mention that. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I, I was born in Germany, and I'm currently living in Germany, but I'm actually English. And I think it was yesterday or the day before I listened to Sarah's podcast, and I think she was the first Brit, and I was a bit disappointed because it was like a close miss for me. <laughs> but you're the first male Brit, so there <laughs> yeah. we go. See, you can always look at the glasses half full. Uh, Ladies first. There, I see. Look at that. You're, are you? You're not in marketing, are you? <laughs> no, but a true British gentleman. Now there, I was going to say the way you're putting spin on all this stuff, I like it. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're quite the marketer. So I got to just ask. Born in Germany, 
But you're you're English, so was was that like a military? How did you? How was how was an Englishman born in Germany? Would be the best way to probably ask that question. Yeah, so my mum's from England. My dad is actually Moroccan, um, and my mum got a teaching job in Germany, so not military related. However, now I'm based in Germany because I did join the British military. Oh well. Thank you for your sh- yeah. I don't know what's Chez. How how does this work? We're allowed to thank other countries that are allies for their service, right? Is that proper? Thank you for protecting your country and homeland and stuff like that. Yes, but that, we're that, allies, we'll so way. I feel yes. like it's their service is like one and the same. So I don't I don't. We know. do work together. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah. Chez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the Revolutionary War. That you know that was like what like seven. That was 1700. So we'll we're well past that. But uh, yeah. awesome. Well, I I did not know that we were going. to... Now, another thing I want to just fess up, were we emailing, were you the person that offered to do this to help us out in a bind, or is that the one we, or is that somebody else? Uh, we did email about this. I can't exactly remember how we then got into... Did you offer, though? Did you say, hey, if you're ever in a bind, let me know? Was that you? I think I might have done, yeah. Because okay. I was surprised because right. in, in one of the podcasts you said that it was quite a struggle to get people on the podcast, which I thought was very strange because, I mean, I'm quite honored to be on it, to be honest, because I, I feel like I don't even have that much to talk about. But then again, it's about beginners, isn't it? Not about pro traders. So Yeah, exactly. If, if, if the requirement here was, we won't even go down those, those yeah. pathways. But yeah, we want, we want a, a good mixture of everything. And now we're talking to an Englishman who lives in Germany who enjoys yes. the stock market. So that's, there we go. So let's uh, let's get this party started, and uh, you know what uh, you, you mentioned that you've listened. Uh, you're in, well into the 150s. Yes. But as far as you know, your journey, where did you first hear about the markets, uh, and you know, kind of just what got you interested to not necessarily just throw your real money in, but want to start to maybe learn more about them and, and potentially get more hands on. Yeah. So um, I never really had any exposure to the markets as when I was growing up as a kid or as a teenager or anything like that. So we we were pretty strapped on cash, to be honest. So I always thought that anything that has to do with money, as in banks, and you know, I didn't know the difference between traders and bankers because, well, why would I? I never never was exposed to it and never had any interest. And I thought you needed PhDs and huge skills in maths and all those things, you know, and maths was never my strong point so no interest at all growing up um then after joining the military and when i was on a deployment i had quite a bit of money that i just was well i was just earning my normal pay um but couldn't spend it so i thought should it just sit on the in the bank and do nothing and i came across peer to peer lending and that was the first time that i got i think it was like you got like 6 and a half or 7% per annum or something like that on your money which i thought was pretty great um, then 2008, 2009 happened. At that point, I thought traders, i.e. bankers, i.e. traders, not knowing the difference still, uh, were all evil and, you know, were going to destroy us all, etc. <laughs> Didn't really pay much more attention to it from then on. And then... Why did you the think whole... they were evil, though? Just out of curiosity, because a lot of people, I feel like yeah. they kind of have the, that impression. So what was your kind of perspective on why? Because you're a trader now, too. So why why did you view our quote-unquote type as evil? Um. Well, first it was it was pretty much just lack of knowledge and, you know, things you don't know, you often fear or, you know, um, and then also the way it was portrayed in the media, you know, the banks did this to us. Um, so it was kind of a combination of those two things, I think, not knowing better and the way it was portrayed in the media. And I mean, that makes total sense too, because I, I can recall being in a position a long, long, long time ago where uh, you just, yeah, if you if you have no idea and you've never kind of fallen down the rabbit hole of what trading yeah. and all that stuff is, you just assume they're all interrelated. And they definitely are, you know, related in some ways, but not as much as you'd think. So exactly. um, I just want to, I want to backtrack a little bit. Did you have a good experience that peer-to-peer lending stuff? Because you're, I think, one of the first people I've ever heard that uh, has done that, but I've heard some good and some bad things. So I just want to hear how that went for you. Yeah, good question. Yeah. I'm curious. Very, too. very good. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the one that I was using was is called Funding Circle. Uh, it's a UK-based company, um, and it's it only gives business loans. And you could set your exposure to half a percent or one percent if you'd put a thousand pounds on there, uh, British pounds, uh, and you set set it to one percent. Then every business would get one percent of those thousand pounds. So it would like uh, the the system would automatically lend it out so you didn't have to do anything else you could just put your money on there set auto bid on what sort of rates you want for which credit uh ratings 
rated companies and then just let it do its thing basically so uh, yeah, I never it's actually problems. a lot more hands-on than i thought that's pretty cool that you guys, you could kind of set all those parameters so that's yeah, pretty interesting yeah. um well i'm glad that went well um so regarding trading and stuff like that so where did you actually find a specific interest or decide you were going to start to get yes. involved did you see a youtube video or some guy saying i, yeah. I trade forex and made a billion dollars in a month so <laughs> how'd that go <laughs> um yes and no so but <laughs> Uh, I was a bit late to the whole crypto thing. Uh, that was <coughs> so end of 2016. One of my mates told me that he was buying Monero. It was, and he was like, "Yeah, you need to get in this thing. This is amazing. This crypto thing. This is a new thing." Blah blah blah. Obviously, Bitcoin had been going by then for 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 a couple of years already. I think I'm not even sure when it started. Um, but Monero was pretty new, and he said, "Yeah, it's only about uh, like 11 bucks or 12 bucks at the moment. Get in there." And I actually did buy some, which worked out very nicely. But that was the point where I was like, okay, there's something out there, this whole financial market thing that is seemingly interesting. And then I got then I got onto the YouTube with the Lambo copters and, you know, the champagne parties. <laughs> and, <laughs> and amazingly also, which is, it seems ridiculous now. It seems absolutely crazy. But amazingly, I believed all those stories. So um just going to call him T.S., Initials TS. Uh, he's pretty good in selling, isn't he? He uh, definitely yes. is. He's a keen yeah. marketer. I do I mean, want to give you like some credit. He seems like a nice guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, w I want to give you credit though. Uh, you're 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 much like a lot of other people that that believe it. Uh, yeah. But I would say, and I would argue that you're actually quite different in the fact of you now publicly, you literally just publicly admitted that you actually believed all that nonsense. Which oh yeah, um, absolutely. You know, but at least you, most people, I don't think would they ever admit. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I never believed it. I never. Eh. So good for you for acknowledging Jeez, your yeah. mistake. That uh, yeah, yeah, you did believe that. Before we go on though, and the, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm liking that rabbit hole. But so you made money with that crypto. Was there yes. ever a sense like that was like skill on your part, or were you kind of always under the impression like yeah, I totally just kind of lucked out with all that, or did you actually kind of have some fool's gold in in the sense of thinking that you actually displayed skills that mm -hmm. created that profit? Uh, no, not at all. So I'm I'm quite uh, happy that from the beginning, pretty much, I realised that I didn't really know what was going on, and I think that is that has saved me from a lot of pain and loss <laughs> so far. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So um, I think un unknown unknowns are the most dangerous things. So if you don't know what you don't know, then that's a problem. But if you realise that, yeah, I need to get educated and I need to sort myself out before I can attack this thing, then. I think that's a saving grace. So that's a great quote, by the way. Yeah. Unknowns are a great are a great danger, or whatever you said. So yeah. that, that that I don't think we've ever heard that one. But that that's good stuff there. So, anyways, I uh, I'll, I'll you know since I de derailed us here, you're <laughs> on YouTube. You're you're yes. lot looking at yeah. the champagne parties, the Lambo copters, TS. Yeah. So I mean, pick it up from there. Yeah. So I was definitely drawn to all that flashy marketing, um, you know, selling the dream and all that stuff that they do. Um, and I just didn't realize it. And I think I realized it uh, from your podcast, actually, I would say, because you were talking about it and talking about obvious marketing tactics. And then it suddenly was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I've, I've been duped. <laughs> but luckily, I didn't pay for anything. So at one point, I did try to get his uh, text message alerting system, which costs uh, only seven or eight hundred dollars a year. So, you know, duped, nah. duped. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, the, my favorite word there was tried, implying that I'm assuming oh. you didn't get it. So well, that's good. Yes, very luckily, uh, my UK debit card was uh, not accepted by his system, and I actually did contact his support, and they were just like, "Well, whatever, just try it differently. Your problem, sort of, kind of." So very unhelpful, as opposed to, for example, when I contacted your support, which I highly rate, by the way. Well, thank you. So yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. uh, I think Good it's kind hear. of funny that uh, you know you're trying to give them money and they're kind of like, "Oh, eh, well, yeah. you know, kind of figure it out." And that's that's the kind of he, approach he they take because he clearly has enough people where it does work. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely, and, and we all know that um, it's it's flashy marketing. And uh, yes. but how how did you stumble across the podcast? Were you just searching for stock trading podcasts and came across this one, or what? Because I always find it fascinating how people stumble across this. 
Uh, I'm not sure whether it was on YouTube or actually in my podcast app. If I just put in trading in there, because I was by that point I was just trawling through YouTube and the web in general, just trying to suck up every bit of knowledge I could about trading and the markets, and just suddenly got this huge interest for it. And yeah, from from nowhere, pretty much. And I'm not sure how I found your podcast though. That's funny how we all go from like zero miles per hour interest in trading yeah. to, okay, now I'm going to spend like the next 10 hours on YouTube and be yeah. up till four in the morning trying to figure out how I'm going to do yeah. this for free. But uh, <laughs> so, so you get, uh, just going to happen real quick. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, you just said something fascinating mm-hmm. and I think it really just illustrates why, why failure rates are what they are. Uh, and I quote, you're up there sucking up knowledge. Yeah. Is that a fair quote? I mean, I'm not misquoting you. You were out there uh, sucking yeah, up knowledge. Yeah. I okay. think you I know where you're going with this. <laughs> we'll oh, see, wow. but yeah. in your in your quest of quote unquote sucking up quote 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 unquote knowledge, yeah. you came to the understanding that hey, all I have to do is pay somebody eight hundred bucks a year to get text message alerts and that's like that's like what it takes. Just pay somebody for text message alerts. So that was the ultimate kind of end game of that knowledge that you sucked up is that kind of a fair assessment or I, I, like i said i don't want to misrepresent <laughs> what you're saying is that pretty fair uh no that's not how it went and actually i was wrong i didn't know where this was going i thought you were going to talk about the unstructured knowledge on youtube um no because that was kind of it was all at the same time like i was looking for the holy grail i guess like you know everyone does at the beginning or most people do and at the same time Though uh, seeing all these videos about technical analysis and about you know uh, fundamental analysis, etc., so I was getting both sides. But I guess it was just this sort of panicky. Well, I get this. What harm could it do? While also learning everything else that I could. But it was still pretty much at the beginning. I think it was. My so I'm just curious. Why did you actually sign up for 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 the, that service? Was it because were you under the impression that? So he's going to send me text alerts and then I just buy and then he's going to send me text alerts to sell and then I sell and I make money. Is that what, or was there more to it that, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious, why exactly did you sign up for a text mm. alert service? Uh, now that you mention it, I'm not even sure. I can't quite remember what I was thinking at that point, especially because I knew I wanted to learn how to trade. So that's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it, to get someone else then to tell you what to do? But I'm not even sure. I think it was just no, you know the marketing what? You, was you, working. You, no, exactly. I was going to say you answered it perfectly. And <laughs> thank you so much for being honest because there you have it, folks. That's what yeah. that type of marketing does. It creates impulse buying and when people reflect back on it like they've yeah. just admitted. I don't know what I was thinking. I totally get it. You were influenced by good marketing. And as I've always said and will continue to say, this TS fella, mm. fantastic marketer. Nobody can take away his marketing. He is uh, brilliant at it. Um, and that is how impulse marketing works right there. Uh, oh, <laughs> when you say impulse marketing, actually it was, I think it was uh, Independence Day and he had like a f- 30, ah. 40% off or something. So I was like, oh my God, I've only got today to get it. <laughs> so yeah, it was time pressure as well. Like if I don't get it today, then, you know, it's again like over a thousand bucks or something. And yeah, and at the, <laughs> and my core point here is that, like you said, when you have unknowns out there, that presents mm. the danger. And when you're out there sucking up knowledge, I'm not saying that you can't suck up good bits of knowledge, but you can also be very susceptible to just that sort of marketing that uh, Dave is Absolutely. being honest, very honest about. So that's kind of when you're out there seeking the vastity of information, uh, as Ches and I always say, yeah, there's good stuff out there. But there's also you're at risk of falling into the, the grip of people that are really, really, really good at marketing. Is that mm. fair summarization there, Ches? Yeah, I definitely agree. And if you know, if TS wanted to put out a course just on marketing, I'd probably be involved in that because that's uh, you know he's just really good at that. But uh, I assure all the listeners out there, if you've put together what we're talking about here, trading is harder than just shorting everything, especially oh, yeah. penny stocks. And we, you know, maybe I'll throw the links in the uh, the show notes about kind of just the the video Clay did about the the math on shorting penny stocks. But um, taking it back on track here a little no, bit. Well, so, I'm not ready yet, Ches. I want to oh, I want to okay. go one <laughs> more point here. <laughs> all because right, another right. point, it's still on topic about the marketing because a lot of these marketers post their results. Hey, look yeah. at my track record. But what a lot of people don't understand is that they should have good track records. It's like a self-fulfilling type circular prophecy because 
they are their their business model is hey sign up for my text alerts i will tell you what i'm shorting or i will tell you what i'm buying but my question to you as a listener do you think they're sending out that text message alert before they buy their shares before they short their shares or do you think they're doing it afterwards to let Sorry, common sense yeah. take you there so they get into a position they then send it out to everybody hey look at this and then guess what all the sheep buy but they were in first so what happens well they can sell at a nice little profit and then what do they do hey look at my profit on that trade see i know what i'm doing of course, a bunch of other sheep get slaughtered in the process, but who cares? Because that brings in more new sheep because they're, they're looking at the track record saying, wow, look at those gains. And it's just a cycle. I mean, it's a beautiful business model. Chaz, maybe we should just change to that. Hey, I think we're gonna do that now. Yeah, text message Please alerts. Don't. We'll we'll find some, yeah, we'll find some low float stocks that we'll buy first and then everybody else buys and the price shoots up and then we dump and then we we'll show get everybody. to do the rebranding. I'll get you on yeah. a Lamborghini and a bikini and stuff like that. And oh, that might steer people away, but uh, we, we can yeah, figure okay. something out. Me? Yeah, yeah. So there so anyway, I just wanted to bring up that point is that's another facet of the marketing. When you see those impressive track records, make sure to check. Well, what service are they um, advertising, and if it's a, like a, an alert service where, hey, I'll tell you when to buy, I'll tell you when to sell, huh, it shouldn't be a, a wonder why they can put up impressive track records. Now, I'm not saying I even totally believe them, but there is, there, there's a business model involved here, and it's very circular, and they just depend on new sheep flowing in, but it's not hard to get new sheep when you can post track records. They just leave out the asterisk, you know, the, the cliff, or the, uh, the fine print that says, yeah, in order to obtain these results, Many of our members are slaughtered in the, you know, are, are led to the slaughterhouse. But, anyways, we'll move on from that. Chaz, you were asked. We got to get where were where were we, Dave? You uh, brought up. I'm not uh, sure. <laughs> I don't know where. Anyways, oh, I know where. So you're on YouTube and you're oh, getting yes, all yes. these uh, different videos. You tried for TS, but they're like, well, screw you. We have plenty of other people, so we're figured out. So I mean, where did things go from that point? Yeah, so I think YouTube is a great way to get your first sort of look at what's going on. But I mean, it's it's a road and lots of roles, uh, roads have potholes. And I guess I nearly fell into one of them. Um, but luckily, I came across your channel, um, another channel, I think it's called uh, Real Life Trading, I think. Um, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, which I thought was very good. So he's got lots of good content out there. Uh, without actually trying to market something. I thought that was pretty impressive. And then there's Sasha Ebdikoff or something, who is more like a fundamental investing type thing. So I was looking at all those, and they, uh, yours and theirs, and all all those three channels are quite serious, and you know they do proper stuff and not you know, count batches of money on hotel beds and stuff like that. So I kind of then was more interested in the actual way how it works. And then I think I got... Uh, the inner circle pretty soon after that as well because like you say it's like less than a cup of coffee or something <laughs> so what is there to lose if I'm willing to Good pay job, 700 Clay. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the fact of the matter way. 99 Honestly. bucks over a year it's just math exactly yeah, if you cannot exactly. spend a dollar 90 the math literally yeah. breaks down to a buck 90 a week so if yeah. you cannot spend that on one cup of coffee there you go you got it paid for yeah I could have spent a lot more than that uh, if I'd bought that other thing so and I'm glad I didn't so uh then I got into your yeah chat room basically yeah. And um, so how did that go? We've we've uh, we've definitely heard some mixed reviews about how people have been treated as they're new, and our our community is very very uh, defensive in terms of we we try to help people out, but at the same time sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. So how'd that go after you joined? Uh, I think I made a few mistakes. I got reprimanded. Uh, one or two times and then I reread the uh, the orders basically before entering the chat room and it's actually quite simple just don't don't be a dick <laughs> pretty much pretty much <laughs> yeah. yeah no so, that's that's uh <laughs> I mean I go into a little bit more details in the rules but if you were to summarize it I would say yeah. there's that's a good uh, summary so it's it's actually quite easy no I mean it's all very professional and clean, which I think is great. Um, and I think it's very good that the community members also police it. So even if you were to be offline, I think for a couple of weeks, I don't think anything would change because the community members would police it for you because everyone's also very particular about wanting to keep it professional and clean. Um, while I've heard some horror stories, especially on this podcast, of course, from guys in other chat rooms. I mean, that sounds horrendous. So, yeah. 
Yeah, so so you join the inner circle now. What did you ideally plan on trading? Because this, this always fascinates me because everyone has a different idea if they want to trade U.S. stocks or um, currencies or whatever it is. So obviously, you, you had mentioned crypto. Um, did this lead you to kind of look at other markets after you joined? Or what was your plan when you kind of got into the community? Uh, yeah, uh, U.S. stocks only at the moment so far. That's all I'm really interested in right, right now. But um, a chart is a chart is a chart, right? So uh, anything goes after that. But at the moment, I'm particularly interested in U.S. stocks, and that's why I've been paper trading, and that's what I've been <laughs> trading. I, I don't want to say trading, but trying to trade as well. So for the last uh, few weeks or months. Now I have a question, and what's I, I think it's a little unique since we don't have a ton of international people on here, but it's good to know that the podcast is listening to people in the international community. So speaking to kind of them, what made you land on wanting to trade U.S. stocks as opposed to, you know, uh, you know, German, German stocks or, you know, U.K. stocks or whatever? What, why, why, uh, why U.S. Uh, stocks? I think it's because I was uh, mainly looking at American YouTubers, etc. So they were talking about U.S. stocks. So that's what I was looking at as well. Um, while I know there's some big traders in London, they they trade the Bund and you know stuff like that or DAX or whatever. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just and also the times are actually really handy because I work till just after the market opens, so I can then trade in the afternoon and evening basically, or look at the market live. I, not necessarily trading, but so so the time difference is really handy for me as well. Okay, nice, nice. So it was essentially just a, a function of. Uh, it's not like you looked at liquidity numbers or. Oh yeah, that as well. That Sorry, were... yeah, absolutely. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So liquidity, uh, just the amount of stocks as well that you have on the American boards is amazing compared to the London Stock Exchange, for example, or whatever. I'm actually quite ignorant in that regard. How many stocks are there on the the, the London I Exchange? I don't actually know. But I, I I know that. But it's a lot less. It's biggest, a lot less yeah. than USA stocks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So there you go for you international people. That's why we're not saying that the U.S. markets are the be all end all. But from a, a statistical <coughs> point of view, I mean they are the most liquid uh, markets. Meaning there's mm. the most volume. There's the most exchanging, buying and selling. Um, so also the most opportunity, isn't it? So. Exactly, the most opportunities. Yeah. And what my fun fact of the day that I just always try to learn at least one per day is I, I was not aware that the, I guess I'm so ignorant to the fact that I just assume that kind of all other exchanges had a bunch of companies too, but apparently that's kind of, did Definitely you know that, not. Chez? Yeah, I, I did know that, but I mainly know that because... Um, any, we, we have a lot of Canadian traders, of course, and Clay, please don't belt out uh, the Canadian anthem like you, you're known to do. I don't um, want to make viewers jealous of my songbird <laughs> voice, so I'll, I'll, I'll refrain. Gosh. No, but the, we have a lot of members from Canada who talk about kind of how much better the U.S. market is over, I think, the TSX, which is Canadian's market. But mm. um, yeah, so that's that's something I've definitely known. But uh, I, I definitely was surprised because, you know, most people I know, uh, especially from the U.K., mainly focus on the buns. So you're focusing mm. on U.S. stocks. Did you have any trouble kind of opening a brokerage account to do that? Uh, no, so I was shopping around for brokers for some time. And uh, I mean, oh, <laughs> this is a good story. My very first trade, uh, I, w I still hadn't decided on a proper broker. So I had some sort of brokerage app that I downloaded. I can't remember, unfortunately, the name. And um, luckily, I never got an investor's hub until fairly late. So uh, I'm happy about that. However, I was on StockTwits which is uh, probably just as bad, actually. And someone was talking about <laughs> tops, so top ships. And they're like, oh, my oh, God, no. it's going to the moon. <laughs> you know, the classic stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll buy a bit of this. But I only bought, I think, uh, a few hundred shares, which was like a couple hundred dollars or something. Um, but the way my trade set up, yeah, I'm using that word very lightly, was uh, a tablet with a live market data app on it. And my mobile phone, which had the 15-minute delays on that trading Ooh. app, so it was, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty ridiculous. But <laughs> now, was this before or after you joined the inner circle? Uh, I think before, yeah. Okay, all right. So this is yeah. when you're just a straight-up savage. You're just out yeah, in the wilderness yeah, yeah. trying to survive, yeah. just feral, rubbing feral trader, rubbing stones together, trying to get fire, all sorts of yeah. stuff. Okay, because yeah, that, I'm not gonna lie. That's anytime Chaz and I hear delayed. And that might as well be a yeah. four-letter word on this. I mean, in the world of trading, delayed, that's, uh, that's I mean, I knew it was not... delayed, so that's, that's, an, that's an advantage, isn't it? I've heard a few people that 
were angry about trades going bad. Well, at least he was aware of it. Yeah, that's yeah. Good yeah. I, I, I don't know. Does that make it better or worse to be like, yeah, this is delayed. Fair I'm still going to use yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know. But uh, that, this is good stuff. So, I mean, I, I guess you're in the inner circle. Mm-hmm. You've been reprimanded. You read the rules. You understand the rules. <clears throat> I mean, where did things kind of go from there? Did you decide that you need to spend some more time learning? Did you decide that you need to tap the brakes on maybe some of your trading, not necessarily stop trading, but lighten up? I guess, where did, you know, kind of things go from that point after you truly kind of gained, uh, you know, a, a foothold of what the inner circle was all about? Uh, yeah, I um, so I found a broker then, uh, interactive brokers, which allow you to trade the U.S. markets from Europe. Um, and I started paper trading and just reading and, listening to podcasts and thinking more and more that I should buy the CTU, which uh, I then did uh, fairly soon after that, I think, a couple months or something. So I got the payment plan, which is fantastic, by the way. So thank you for that. That's really good. Okay, so you're 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 doing the CTU payment plan right now? Or uh, no, it's, it's, it's paid off. Yeah, it's paid off. Okay. And I, I guess I'm curious. I don't know if I've ever talked to anybody on the podcast that's on the payment plan. Was it kind of nice where you were only given a couple courses at a time? That way it wasn't like information overload. Did you find that beneficial at all? I'm not saying that's why you did it, but I've always wondered if maybe that's actually kind of a positive attribute to it. I, I think that's a massive positive thing about it uh, because it's even more structured then because you have to start with one course and then work your way through the next courses. And then you also look forward to uh, to the next payment because you think, ah, oh, I've finished this course and I've got another 10 days to go, damn. And then when it comes out, you're straight away on it. So it actually motivates as well, I think. And it, I think it's really good, perfect way, I think. Interesting. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, it makes sense now that you say it all, but I mean, when I was just, you know, just trying to, so you, I always kind of struggle, Mike. Well, I wonder if you could structure the other way that way too, but I mean, at the same, I don't know. It's kind of well, a I fine line. I'll give you an example. I took a, I took a psychology course specifically, and actually you get to the end. Of, I didn't know it was structured this way. You get to the end of a module, and it's a long module, and uh, then it goes, you can't get to the next one t- until three days from now. And I was like, ah, oh, like I want to get into the next thing. And Clay, this is you Especially this. you, because yeah. I know how you do studying. You like to just <laughs> be smart. Yeah, when, when university came out, I freaking binged it in less than a month, almost like all of the content. But yeah, that it wasn't beneficial for me because I went through it too fast. So in those three-day gaps, I, you actually do the homework and things that it wants you to do. And uh, then just like you said, you're looking forward to the next module. So Clay, I would agree um, with Dave here that it is well and it is good that you do it that way. So good job on you. Definitely. Yeah, all unintended. But uh, I, I wish you could, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to re-advise and maybe just set up. Just take credit the, for the it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stop being so humble. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get me my Lambo copter. We're having a champagne party tonight and counting money on a hotel bed, okay? And then we're going to put pictures of it on Instagram, all right? That's what we're doing. So, all right, you, you get into CTU. Yeah. You, you're you starting to go through the courses. Now, as you go through the courses, you're are you trading with real money? Is it all paper trading? How exactly are you? Because uh, like I said, I, I think this is unique. I don't know if we've, we've had any other payment plan members on it. But how did you kind of manage your trading and going through education at the same time? Uh, so I'd stopped trading quite a while before that, uh, quite soon after joining the Inner Circle. Uh, and I mean, I never really lost any money. It was just tiny positions or or, or far too tight stops, which is another story. Uh, so I think I'd lost like $100 or something over months or 200 possibly, I don't know, something like that. So I'd stopped trading for a while before that already because I figured that, okay, uh, you know, I think your your analogy with the brain surgeon is always quite good. You study first and then you practice, and then you go into the real thing. So I thought, okay, I haven't even studied yet, so why would I even jump practicing? (laughs) If you know what I mean, that's jumping two steps ahead. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, stop even paper trading. First do at least robotic trading. After that, if you want to paper trade a bit, okay. Uh, Once you start talking about actual techniques and strategies, then, then I started paper trading again, so in the courses. Yeah. Now, going through the courses, did you appreciate the way that uh, Clay teaches in terms of he pretty much will get on your nerves because he <laughs> drives points home so hard? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so it definitely helps because you really remember it. But like uh, like you often say, Clay, at the beginning, you know, I will be getting on your nerves, but that's the whole point. So, so yeah, it, it definitely works. 
It is nice that you give that disclaimer, Clay, because I promise you, after going through the courses, I did want to punch you in the face, but just from <laughs> nah. your voice. I, I'm surprised while, but... I have not been punched in the face yet at any meet and greet yet. Just <laughs> golf club to the face, baseball bat, just nothing. I mean, yeah. I, I guess. But uh, yeah, there's there's a method to the madness with all that. But just, um, just hearing you know, that just... disclaimer makes my stomach sink already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the. Uh, it's just a good old fashioned honesty party. We really do need to break out some champagne here. But Definitely all right, yeah. so I mean. I guess where do things, looking at the time, we're, we're, we're nearing the finish line, but we're not quite there. I mean, I guess where do things stand for you right now with your trading? Are you still practicing? Are you, are you going at things with real money? But where, where are we at kind of present day? Or, or did you have any other areas that you wanted to talk about to kind of bridge the gap? Uh, I, I think, no, we can pretty much go into it, I think, because um, while paper trading, uh, which, you know, worked out, I guess, um, I did set Interactive Brokers, the, the amount that you have, I set it to $30,000, but set my risk parameters to pretend like I only had 10000 if you know what I mean. Uh, so I was, I was doing 2% risk if I had, as if I had a $10,000 account, so risking 200 per trade, because um, I wanted to be above the pattern day trader rule so that I could practice more. Uh, because also on a simulated account, Interactive Broker shuts you off if you're if you come into Pattern Day Trader. Um, so I wanted to be above that, but I wanted to be realistic, as in, okay, I'm going to open the account with ten thousand dollars. So I set it to that. Uh, but after a while, I, I think quite well about five months or something, I thought, okay, and I also heard quite a few people say that uh, it makes sense to actually put money on the line because it will be very different, which I found to be absolutely true. However, with very, very, very small positions. So um, at the moment, I'm risking between 20 and $40 per trade. And the first one that I put on, even that, I mean, the, I couldn't sleep and it was $20. So it's pretty ridiculous, but it kept me up. Why couldn't you sleep? Because that's fascinating. Yeah, it was, just, it was just knowing that, you know, oh my God, you, not even you might lose it, but who knows where it's going to go. So it could go up, it could go down. You might make money, you might lose it. Losing $20, honestly, I'm not bothered because, you know, people spend a lot more on cigarettes or whatever. <laughs> um, but it was just the excitement of actually having skin in the game, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it amazing? That's why we always say, and I'm, I'm sure you can totally relate, but we're always talking about voices on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. And just everywhere, you know, we all have voices in our head and a great way to meet them is to enter into yeah. the world of trading. But I Absolutely. think that perfectly summarizes it. I mean, $20 on the line. A lot of people yeah. blow through $20 and don't even know they've blown through $20. And here you are, it's, it's keeping you up at night because you were, you were meeting all these different voices, excitement mm -hmm. voices, voice, you know. So it's just, uh, that's why I say, if you've never traded before, uh, you know, it's just, I promise we're not crazy people, but you do, I promise, you have voices in your head. And Absolutely, you just yeah. gotta kind of put yourself in the right situations. Uh, to meet them. So right now, you are trading with real money, and that, that's yes. your risk parameters. You're willing to trade twenty to, or excuse me, lose twenty to forty dollars. Yeah, because at the moment I still see it as paper trading, basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, just that is actual money. Um, but uh, so I've, I've, I keep filling up my account. So not keep filling up. It sounds like I keep losing, but I'm, I'm still adding to my account every month. Um, to build it up to uh, a size where it would make more sense, I guess, uh, while doing these tiny trades. So I would basically um, divide the amount that I'm willing to ri to lose by the stop distance, and that gives me the position size. Um, hey, he's he's using math. He's got a budget we, to keep funding his account. <laughs> Clay is probably tearing I, up I, over I, there. No, I was gonna. I and I love how things work in proportion, meaning. Every month, get a little bit more money. Get a little more money. And mm. I guess my suggestion, and maybe you're already doing this, so just my, may I give you my two cents? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love how you're doing it in proportion, but I mean, to me, I'm assuming, if not, like I said, I mean, if you're, if you're practicing, not necessarily if you're winning, but if you're practicing good discipline, then I would say you're justified to add more money to the account. But mm -hmm. if you notice that you had a bad month and it was a bad month because you were just breaking rules all over the place, well, then... At, at that point, you would probably want to reassess, should I really be adding money to something where I can't even, uh, you know, because that's kind of like throwing, you know, good money after bad money. But yeah. bad money being defined as, you know, staying up above, uh, you know, the levels that, you know, you would want to, um, 
Does that make sense? I guess yeah, what I'm trying to yeah. get at here. So, so what okay. I always do. So I, 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 so far I've only broken the rules while p- actually paper trading simulated account, which I'm very happy that I did because I was able to identify it. So I did revenge trades and chasing and stuff like that. But then I realized that I did it, and then I made notes in my. So I also keep a journal. I, I, that'll make you happy as well, I guess. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I noted it in there, okay, at this point I got in because of these reasons and it was a mistake because the setup just wasn't there and I was just following some hype or my own hype or whatever. So um, in, in, since putting money on the line, I haven't broken any rules because I always set everything before. So I, the, the, the math will give me the position size, so I can't go in too big because the position size will be calculated um, by my stop distance and, and risk. Uh, and then I set the stop before or at the same point uh, of the entry. So, uh, sorry, I'm losing my words. So I set the entry and at the same time the stop. So once I'm in the trade, the stop is already there and then I don't touch it unless I move it closer to where the price was actually. That sounds exactly how I pretty much put in my... uh... I, I do the same type of thing for day trading and mm-hmm. for kind of swing trade. So I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously you are under PDT at this yes, this yeah. point in time. Um, so are you essentially using the daily charts to do these swing yes, trades yeah. or, or how's that going? So the daily charts? Yeah, yeah. So uh, only swing trades, daily chart. Um, I do have the weekly chart up as well just to see the overall trend. Uh, it's like easy one one look and you know if it's been going down or up. Uh, and the intraday chart just to see what it's doing, I guess, but I don't really look at it that much. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, daily swing trades. Gotcha. Now, do you by chance use any of those, that intraday chart for picking your entry? Uh, you know, regardless, you're, you're looking at the daily chart to kind of pick if you think there's an opportunity or not. Do you use the intraday chart at all to kind of manage that entrance a little bit? Or you pretty much, it meets the daily criteria, I'm in at the end of the day. Um, so... On paper trading, I was actually using the de- uh, the intraday chart as well to adjust stops, but then I realized, wait a minute, my, my entry and the way I planned this trade was on the daily chart, and now I'm using an hourly or 30-minute chart to adjust my stop. That doesn't really make that much sense because the daily chart is then saying something else as to the chart that I'm looking at now. So I, I've not done that since uh, since going live. I'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of people do similar things and they, you know, they spot a great opportunity on the daily chart, but then they move down to the smaller time frame to set their stop. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, you got to give it a little more room if you're trading the daily chart. And, you know, yeah. it's just a simple math problem. Like you said before, it's just the how wide your stop is and that determines how much, how many shares you can get based on your risk parameters. So awesome. You, you and I are very similar in that way. So <laughs> But what about what about indicators? What do you use on your chart to uh, kind of help determine and spot opportunities for yourself? Uh, so I thought the indicator lessons were very interesting, but uh, you but said what? <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, Clay's I'm, hovering over the no, ban button. Don't worry, don't <laughs> yeah. worry. I'm agreeing with you because you said what are the king indicators? You know, price action and volume. Uh, so I've got that obviously um and i put in support and resistance which i guess you could say is an indicator but i draw it in myself uh and then i've got the uh, i've got three simple moving averages and the bollinger bands i think are interesting because you can at a glance see if it's uh stretched in any direction i i like it you're you're using the straight up kiss method keep it yeah. simple stupid yeah. and not that we're against uh, you know, MACDs and RSIs and chalk and money flows. Definitely and, got its place, yeah. Well, you know, all that other stuff. I mean, if you can make it work, that's fantastic. But um, I, I've always kind of gone, you know, you know, some of those things can be very uh, beneficial, mm. but I've always found them in a very basic type of way. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into my volcano trade, but I mean, the volcano trading setup does use indicators, mm. but you use them in a very basic way, but... Of, a way that, at least to me, it can present some really, oh, well, that setup makes nice mm. sense. Yeah, that thing looks like it might be coming off the bottom. So um, we're not opposed to indicators here, but sometimes I think we, people get the impression like we we think anybody that uses the MACD or the RSI is, no, we just, there's, there's a lot of good information that, be, that can be taken from Definitely. just the good old pillars of price action and volume. I think also now, another I, point, oh, sorry. No, go for it. Um, go for it. That, that, another, we're just having a conversation, yeah, so true, yeah. we speak over each other all the time. Go for it. I'm glad you're <laughs> you hopping do. in and getting on board with that. I, I think another really important point is uh, technical indicators are more advanced, aren't they? So it, it's another thing that you're adding to the mix uh, as opposed to price action volume and perhaps a simple, 
the word says it already, moving average. But if you start adding all these technical indicators as well, then you, you don't only have to understand the movement of the price and the volume, how it relates, but you have to fully understand how to use and implement that indicator as well. So that's another thing that you have to understand. So I'm, I'm literally at the beginning right now. You know, so uh, first learn how to trade a clean chart. And then if I want to add more stuff onto it, then, yeah, I'll have to study more, basically, to understand that as well. So I think, especially at the beginning, uh, it's a mistake to clutter your chart because then you just don't understand anything. And my, my uh, not, not that we're disagreeing, but my warning to that logic would be, if you can trade the simple chart, think about what I just said. You can trade. Oh, so exactly where I was going to go. <laughs> if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's no need to muddy the waters with uh, all this other indicators out there. So yeah. uh, I, I, I do understand the general, uh, what you're saying in general. But I mean, from more of a practical sense, like you said, you're right now you're focused on just trading the basic chart. Well, yes. if you can literally trade the basic chart, then hey, you, you got something that's working you for you. You can do that for life. Yeah, no need to mm. uh, to you know bring in all this other stuff that maybe makes your chart look cool and like when you're talking uh are you, are you married Do you have a girlfriend or anything uh, i've got a girlfriend yes okay well i guess never mind that example i was it's never mind and i was gonna say you can impress the chicks with all this yeah, like she sure. doesn't need to woo the ladies yeah, with I the but hike I, I mean, and yeah. like if you're ichimoku well yeah so if you want to impress your buddies be like listen fellas the Listen, Kumo cloud that, is that, twisting. I was going to say, I was going to try my accent, but that was a straight up Scottish accent, so that wouldn't work either. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, you can impress your buddies by saying that you use all these different indicators and stuff, but who cares, you know, at the end of the day, if, if something, if trading the basic chart works for you, hey, you're, you're trading, uh, and, and that's, and, you know, that's the name of the game. Yeah. I mean, I mean so, the trade uh, uh, platform to people, the, the uninitiated, basically, it looks like a NASA ground control station anyway already, doesn't it? So, <laughs> so <laughs> a few more lines that, on it, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, that is so true. I, I, yeah, I think we've, the matrix is what I, I get quite a bit, but yeah. NASA ground control, uh, I, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty uh, yeah, that's pretty accurate thing too. And there's nothing worse than when the rocket launches and you're on the short side and you don't honor the stop loss. So that's... Uh, that's a that's a Houston. We have a problem set up. But I'm, what I'm what I'm curious about, especially because you know you mentioned how that twenty dollar just not even have lost it, just mm. being on the line really kept you out. So I mean, let's talk kind of mentally and how you're dealing with losses. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you struggling with that? I, I guess kind of how is all that working out for you right now from a, a mental point of view? Because you know, for you listeners out there, this is one of the the, the key you know concepts of trading is you know how do you deal with losses? Because our brains are not wired to to like that, especially when it, a loss implies not like, oh, I lost bingo. It's, oh, I, I actually lost real money. So, I mean, how, how are you doing with that from a, a mental and psychology point of view? So, uh, after quite a few little losses, uh, I've realized that I don't struggle with losing that amount at all, actually. I just think, oh, well, shame. Put it in my journal. Um, it's, another, it's another loss that goes onto my statistics. Um, and my curve doesn't look as nice, but hey, whatever. So I'm actually struggling more with FOMO and and excitement of wanting the trade or excitement when the trade goes in my way, I, which is also just as dangerous, I think, um, because if you're overexcited, then you're just going to start doing silly things as well. So it needs to be a, a fine balance between boredom and excitement, I guess. I, I, by the way, I, di I disagree when you say tr trading has to be completely boring. I have to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? Uh, so I yeah, I'm going to see there where this goes. Yeah, so so when you're bored, um, you you your mind wants to be occupied. So you might also put on a trade that you shouldn't be just for the sake of being in a trade because you're bored. So you're thinking, well, there's nothing going on, but I'm bored, so I may as well put on a trade. And on the other end, oh, I'm super excited. This went really well. Yeah, put on another one. Woo! And then it suddenly tanks. So I think it should be in the middle. So sort of a bell curve type thing. So you should be alert but not excited and also not bored. So bored, literally. Fair point. That, and that's, so let me add in a layer of context to what mm -hmm. I, I am personally referring to in my mind. I may have never, but I'm talking about when, once you get into a trade, that's when it should be boring because you should be like, okay, mm -hmm. I have a strategy. Let's just see what happens. But if you hop into a trade and it's just mass chaos, you feel like you're on a roller coaster, your adrenaline is surging, that tells me eh, maybe you don't quite have a, a total amount of faith in your strategy, maybe you're not quite okay with the risk. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. But I, you're absolutely right. If you are bored when you're not in a trade, then yes, absolutely, you run a high risk of potentially forcing a trade. 
Or if you're too excited, yeah. then yeah, you can definitely rush into a trade. But what I'm trying to really get across is, how do you know if you have a, a strategy that you have full faith in? Well, how do you feel after you get in the position? Mm. How's your heart rate doing? You know, how, how's, because if your heart rate starts to thump, it may not necessarily be because you don't have confidence in the strategy. It may be a lack of, it, a lack of um, comfort in the amount that you could potentially lose. Mm. So your risk is off. So by definition then, the, your entire trade plan is not quite where it needs to be because there's lots of components to it. But I do get, I like you. I, I like people <laughs> that don't just like agree with everything I say. Dave, the sky's green. Yes, it's sure. No, I mean, you, you would not fall for that. So that's a good conversation. I think most guests, I, hopefully they don't just say what Ches and I say just to agree. But nah. yeah, I like, uh, I like these conversations. And would you agree with me though, Dave? Do you see where I'm coming yeah, from in terms of that yeah. bit of context? Uh, I think um, okay. having a good bullshit detector possibly led me and not blowing my own trumpet too much now but led me to your courses i would say so i nearly fell into the trap but then my my detector started growing and then i realized that i needed to learn and then uh, i guess your courses and your whole setup passed the test basically well good i, I thank you i appreciate that and i like to when i can pass bs tests because yeah. uh if uh that's why i always laugh when people are like you know you guys you know me Ches, nate or whatever, oh, you're scamming people so we're scamming people by telling people that trading is hard mm. and that trading does not happen overnight. In a t-shirt in front of a blackboard. The, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And that, you know what, sometimes the best way to grow a trading account is to go get a part-time job and deliver pizzas. If that, I'm sorry, if that is scamming Scam. people, then I guess Ches, you know, myself and Nate, we are out there scamming people because uh, Unless you've all got I loads know is of that, pizza shops possibly and just need more people working in them. That's you true. Shut your, nope. shut your mouth, Dave. <laughs> Busted. We're not airing this podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Delete. All right. Never mind. This one is not going public because we do have pizza franchises all over. No, but uh, yeah. Well, thank you for very much. And um, I'm, I'm, some. I mean, I would never do that because it is just. But it's like, man. Sometimes, you know, Ches and Nate and I, we should just straight up go to the. Let's let's rent a Lamborghini, take some pictures, it's amazing, and then just it? tell everybody that hey, it's as easy as go golfing. Just bring your phone so that we can text you when to buy and when to sell, and you can make money as you play. You know your 18 holes. But yeah. uh, I, mean, I, I digress. So crazy. Ches, you have a time machine. Oh, uh, nice. Hopefully you're g going to lend it to. Uh, shipping costs maybe a little bit to get it over the pond, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, if Bitcoin goes above eight thousand anymore, I can afford to send it over there. So if I was <laughs> to lend you my time machine, Dave, <laughs> um, and you can go back and give yourself one piece of advice, and it's not a buy or sell recommendation, yeah. what piece of advice would you give yourself? Um, so what point are we going back, or can I choose that free? You could choose that freely. You could go back to freaking second grade and say, I want to, you know, not buy a stock because I was going to say buy Microsoft or something, but you can't do that. <laughs> um, so I think I would go back to the point where I was um, just starting to get an interest as in uh, 2012 or 13 or whenever that was with the peer-to-peer -peer lending and tell myself, hey, look at this. There's a lot more out there get yourself educated and basically go through the same steps that I've got that I'm going through right now so I wouldn't change anything in that um but I just tell myself earlier that would be good nice I like it I like it well let's head into the fun questions now <sighs> and I always like asking these to God. our international members so what is your favorite movie ah uh, you know I I was I was a bit uh nervous and excited about the whole podcast thing but the most the thing that was making the mo me the most nervous are these questions on which everything hinges, basically. And it is. Yeah. It is. This is. <laughs> this. Is, I. I am in full judgmental mode right now, so yeah. I'm going to determine from henceforth if I actually like you as a human being. So, unfortunately, I think I've failed you, Clay, because I'm not a big movie person. So, yeah. TV shows. Yeah, I like um, like stuff with knights or science fiction so i really rated the expanse i thought that was a great series on netflix i think it was um bit of rick and morty or game of thrones stuff like that i know you rip game of thrones but i think that's more about the watching habits and not the series itself possibly yeah that, that's more my Correct. rant on personal finance yeah. i can't get ahead in life yeah. quiet please i'm watching game <laughs> yeah, of thrones exactly, yeah. like, okay <laughs> priorities right, well, much? i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyways, I'm not going to go down that ranting rabbit hole. No, I'm, uh, right I'm more, now, but, I'm more uh, a YouTube guy, I think. I, I, I like just consuming short bits of something and then moving on, so I, I, I can't commit to a movie, I guess. <laughs> that's, how that's how fine. old are you, that's, Dave, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm 33, we'll be 34 in December. Okay, I'm, I'm 
pretty close to that, but yeah, I'm, I'm also in the same boat that uh, movies are just a, a lot of time for me. I'm, I'm yeah. in the same boat that I like consuming kind of shorter, shorter duration stuff, which is probably why I like you know getting a TV show episode in yeah. here and there. I mean, but, we're, um, we're 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 these new age crypto kids, aren't we? YouTube crypto kids. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We, we got an attention span yeah. of a uh, two year old for the rest of our lives. But uh, yeah. what do, what do you uh, enjoy for food? What do you like to uh, eat, and what do you like to have for dessert? Uh, so food. Food, hmm, that's also a difficult one because I, I kind of eat all across the board. I'm, I'm not that fussy even. Uh, I've always been a fan of sushi, I guess. So, yeah. But that's not something that you'd constantly eat, is it? So. I will. I'll pound sushi. I'll clear the sea. Well, or, yeah, yeah. I'll clear the I, sea. I, I, meant, I meant financially. Two hundred fifty dollar bill yeah, later. Exactly. Financially, not not as in taste or amounts. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's buffets, aren't there? True. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that's real fish or rice or anything, but there's buffets of sushi. <laughs> so, surimi stuff. I guess that was kind of. I'm trying to eat on a budget, you know. I got to be able to watch Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Exactly. So I mean, I, you got to watch your, old watch country your... buffet sushi. Mm. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll watch. You'll watch uh, Game of Thrones with your head in the toilet. Pro- Actually, Old Country Buffet was probably just about to offer us a sponsorship, and we just no. we just flushed the toilet on that one. Good, oh, good thing we own a pizza chain. That <laughs> yeah, that's works true. Out. Yeah, that Dave just exposed. Well, anyways, uh, what do you like to do for hobbies? Um, I like diving, skydiving, snowboarding. So anything that gets my adrenaline up, I guess something like that. Um, I also like well reading and. Educating. I got a telescope recently, so you can see like the poles on Mars and the rings of Saturn and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. And another nerdy thing that I've gotten into recently is uh, keeping ants as pets. <laughs> Clay, do you have any thoughts on that? You have cows, I, but uh, he's got ants. I mean, do these ants? Do they have revenue potential? I guess is kind of what I, I mean. Do they? I guess you could sell them. If you, yeah. At least if you said you had, they had bees, I'm like, okay, I get it. They have honey, but did you? Or is it just a straight up? What, what's the idea behind ants? So it's it's like a, it's a, like a vivarium, but it's called a formicarium for ants, and they're very low maintenance. You don't have to do anything with them. Now and again, you put a little cricket in there or something and they'll just eat it and be happy for quite a while again so it's the cost is extremely low but it's quite interesting sort of watching their behavior because you can't ever see them in their natural habitat i mean if you lift up a stone and look underneath then they'll all go crazy obviously defending themselves but in a formicarium you can actually watch the queen laying and uh, laying eggs and you know stuff like that it's it's his version of a, a Zen garden. It's yeah, very low overhead, yeah. so you can't be yeah, mad. Yeah, but didn't him. you say you like to like go skydiving and snowboarding well, you and need, get your adrenaline? Yeah, skydiving with the ants. <laughs> you always need an up and a, a down. You need you know. I was gonna say you're like about as polar opposite. Yeah. I'm, I started to question. Did I hear that right? That he likes to get his adrenaline up, and now he's sitting here saying, "Gotta relax sometimes." He has man. ants and stuff. So I guess you're just a well, well-rounded individual. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's how he. That's how he keeps himself level. But yeah. uh, Dave, if you had to pick three words that you would surmise as successful trading, what would those three words be? Oh, I should have thought of this one earlier. Damn, I forgot to prepare for that. Um, which is good, I guess. Uh, I guess uh, three words. So, self-control, I guess. Is that one word or two? Um, we can count that as one. Scru- I don't really like you, so that's one word. <laughs> <laughs> Scrutiny, so you need to... You need to scru- oh, that's good. I don't think we've had that word actually yet. So No, not, no, that's, that's good. Not only because you need to scrutinize the market, possibly, if you want to, but especially yourself, I think that's important. So, uh, because you can't improve what you don't measure, and you have to... You know, know what you're doing and why you're going wrong or right, and uh, find your weakest link and improve the whole chain by sorting that weakest link out, basically. So, yeah, self scrutiny. Um, I guess discipline. It's very sort of cheesy, but I guess everyone says that. Cheesiness can be the truth, though. I, I, I you know, discipline is really what it all boils down to at the end of the day, because discipline you can apply. To anything, whether that's discipline to get in at a right mm. entry point, discipline to keep your risk the way it should be, discipline to do the homework the way True, you're. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's cheesy, but it's it really is kind of like the backbone of things. But scrutiny, you know, that gave you. Uh, I kind of like you now because that was a good one. So <laughs> I mean, that was. Uh, but uh, I think that's ever. I think that. That's a wrap. So, awesome. uh, Dave, I mean, did you uh, you mentioned before we started recording that you were maybe a little nervous. Was it, did this turn out to be okay? Was it? Oh yeah, absolutely. A, a halfway fun experience. So, to everyone 
that is debating with themselves or, or, or a bit scared of going on the podcast, do it, guys. We need more podcasts. Yeah. And it's not bad, right? I mean, Chez and I, we're, we're just, this was literally just unscripted and we're just hanging out and talking, right? Exactly. With a, with a crypto dude. didn't threaten you too hard in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, just, exactly. Just, I mean, just a crypto dude and another one that has cows as pet, you know, just regular, regular guys. <laughs> yeah, guy with with cows and totally and normal guys. <laughs> And Chez is high on paint fumes right now because he's <laughs> painting his room. So, I mean, yep. this is uh, – we, we're, we're, how's that coming, Chez? I saw the picture. Uh, we're about a little over 50% done. We're just working on the downstairs now, which is a lot less rooms and a lot less edging and stuff. So, nice. it's going. Should be done by And you guys tomorrow, are doing that all on your own, right? Uh, Kelly's uncle came out because he's a professional painter. So, we're just helping him out. And uh, But, yeah, we're, we're getting put to work. I've been spackling and freaking putting some crazy textures on stuff. It's, it, I'm learning a lot. That's for sure. So what I what I'm what I was kind of getting at is I, I smell sweat equity. Is that are you building there's, some equity in through the through the sweat of the brow? Yeah, there's sweat equity. I thought you were gonna say so now uh, when I come over and stay at your house can uh, will be all nice and good looking. But sorry, Clay, you're still staying out in the shed. My apologies. And I'm just Airbnb paint the pricing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I can paint the yeah. shed for just, you. Just, just paint the shed. Yeah, you'll throw the remainder buckets on the wall. You will call it uh, never art, mind. I want it's to art. Yeah, Man, <laughs> you can't say that, Trez. You just offended the art community. Great. Oh my goodness, we gotta wrap this thing up. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, um, we love art artists, artists. We love them. So, uh, Dave, uh, would you come back and hang out with us again? Yeah, definitely. At some point yeah, in the future? yeah, definitely. I'd be interested as well to know or to recap myself and how it goes, and you know, see see how the journey goes until then. Quite excited about. Perfect. It, yeah. Well. I, I will say from an observer, just listening to you talk and the way you're determining your risk and entries, I mean, you are trading with a plan. There's no doubt about that. I did not sense any randomness to things. So um, awesome. yeah, just keep at it. Keep working hard and keep, like you said, just add a little bit more money every month or what, what have you. And mm -hmm. I, I would definitely say that nobody can accuse you of rushing into things or being illogical or anything like that. So yeah, keep it up and we will definitely have to have you back. So thank you uh, awesome. again very much, sir. And uh, yeah, thank you for your service to your country who happens to be our ally. I do appreciate it because we're, we're all in it together. Cheers, yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. I love British people. They have the accent going. Dave, no, I'm not going to. I think you should give me, uh, can you give me some uh, accent yeah, sure, le so voice lessons at some point? Uh, okay. Call cool blimey I, I know, is very um, important. Blimey? Yeah, call cool blimey. Core blimey. Core blimey. No, that was more Irish. Anyways, we're, sorry. All right, we got to end this thing, Dave. I yes, am going cancel, down a cancel. rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah, can't, abort, abort. Abort. Manual override. All right, here we go. There you go. Exactly. All right, for you listeners out there, before we go, you probably just already turned this off. So if you're still listening, bless your heart. I appreciate it. But if you are still listening, a few things. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure to check out the, the channel as a whole. A lot of other things besides these podcasts, live trade videos, quick tip videos. We have a vlog, uh, lots of just different stuff. So check out the channel. Hopefully you decide to subscribe. If you're listening on YouTube or on iTunes or any other podcast players, then again, please subscribe. And especially on iTunes, if you could leave us a rating, that goes a long way and really helps us out. And uh, we truly do appreciate that. And finally, if you're listening at claytrader.com on the show notes page, leave us a comment, click that share button. If you do leave us comments, uh, we will read them personally. We'll, we will reply to them personally. So it's a, a way to interact with us and just uh, ask questions, give us your thoughts, suggestions, you know, what have you. So um, again, we'd appreciate it if you uh, would do that. So thank you again to Dave. Thank you to our esteemed co-host, Chez. Thank you guys. And thank you as listeners. We'll see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com. <laughs>